So welcome back to the English Institute of Sport here in Sheffield. Um, you're joined by Matea and my name is Yuri. We're commentating on our next game here on Table 1 at the European Para Table Tennis Championships at the English Institute of Sport. And in this, the Group 6 Class 2 wheelchair competition for men, we have Oleksandr Jezik from the Ukraine, along with the domestic opportunity for Christopher Ryan to showcase his game in front of his home crowd. And um, these guys have uh, lost in both rounds previously, I believe, Matea. Uh, yeah, they uh, were both part of a group of three players and uh, both lost to Federico Crossara of Italy 1-3. to three. So, um, in end effect, uh, this is a match to secure that uh, second place in the group, proceeding further into best of 16, the knockout stage uh, of the competition. Yeah, uh, Jezik did well against Crossara, but each time when it came to the crunch, he, he just didn't seem to be able to sustain it. But, uh, but that could be more about Crossara being the better player. Yeah, and Ryan, of course, a newcomer to the sport, his first uh, international competition only this year. Uh, so he's extremely excited to even be part of this so um, successful, so uh, exciting uh, British squad uh, to have the chance to play in front of the, the home crowd, uh, his friends and family, and uh, gather important experience for maybe later on. Well... Let's hope that uh, he gets more than an experience here today for the GB supporters. Yeah, he won, um, he won bronze uh, in singles combined class one and two at the US Para Open, which was uh, his last tournament, as well as at the Greek Para Open this year. So his progress has been very fast and um, certainly also a factor um, that brought him here gave him this chance uh, to do even better. Well, it's one all so far early in the game. Jezik is a, a well, well experienced competitor from the Ukraine. Yeah, around internationally since 2004, I believe, all the way back. Uh, twice took bronze at the European Championships in singles, but that was a while ago in 2013 and 15. Now world number 17, so a nice uh, scalp that uh, Ryan could take here. That's well put indeed, well put indeed. So Some disagreement on whether the serve was out or not. Quick reminder for everyone that in wheelchair game the, the ball has to cross the end line rather than any of the sidelines on the opponent's side for it to be considered in, otherwise it's a let. And Ryan makes a good start, 3-1. Jezik peppers the net once again. And, uh, and this time Ryan responds with the same stroke into the net. And 3-2 he leads. good angle there from from the GB athlete yeah nice variation from the Ukrainian as well class 2 limited in upper body balance upper torso balance so always searching for that angle to bring the opponent out of position Ryan looks quite young I don't know what it, what his age is 32 uh, there you go coming from rugby background to ah, table tennis really well, you've researched him well rugby union background is that right so that may have been a, a, a bit injury. of a change of pace <laughs> It is, yeah. Between rugby and table tennis, but Ryan's doing well here at the start of this game. Execution there. Not so good from Zenit, from Jezik, but good from Ryan's perspective. And yeah, he's 5 Yeah, trying with that tetra high loop, but it was too long, too easy. 
for Ryan to reach and finish. Oh, great return of service. Yep, that was better. With a lot of side spin right over, angled right over the sideline. Out of reach completely. Oof. And he achieves that with the help of the net on that occasion as well. So the bounce of the ball going with the British athlete at the moment. Yeah, it was great shot anyway, but some luck never hurt anyone. Well, except the opponent. <laughs> Good rally here. Oh, well executed there. From Brilliant rally and then the tomahawk shot down the line. Winning the point for the Ukrainian Ježik. That's a nice expression, a tomahawk shot. Oh, Ryan. Easy to see why, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> Usually the tomahawk dunk in basketball, isn't it? Bang! So Ryan using the towel break here just to collect his thoughts. Yeah, he's, uh, to take a breath, to concentrate. Well, he to started bring well. This to a close. He has started well, though, hasn't he? I tell you, he's eight four up. Oh, and he got that one to drop just, was yeah, it just, just long? Just on the end line, just into the elbow area. Perfect, really. Or it looks like it was just over the table. Sometimes difficult yeah. to see with this camera positioning. So it's 5-9 to Ryan. But the players know. <laughs> yes, they do. And hopefully the official. Nice play from Jezik. Yeah, beautiful angle here. Again, some net help. Jezik acknowledges the help of the net. 6-9. Yeah, what was a comfortable lead for Ryan is now quickly melting down he does need two more points to bring this game to a close but it's Ježik now who serves and controls the start of these two that looked an opportunity but just a little bit out of reach in the end yeah, it wasn't perfect but it was enough this is game point oh very well done. Looked as if Ye Jezik had the chance to, to kill that. But uh, Ryan recovered. Uh, it's sometimes difficult to see on the screen uh, the different spins on the balls. Both uh, players using some inverted rubbers that change the pace, that kill the spin. Uh, so you need to be careful. And when you're sitting behind the table, of course, the position is different as well. Everything much faster than it looks here on TV. Yeah, certainly when you see the angle side on, you can see the pace of the ball, quick and slow. So a good first win, first uh, set win there for R Christopher Ryan. He'll be yeah, pleased with that. Yeah, first encounter and uh, Ryan in the better position now. He'll have to keep this up, of course. Well, he's certainly got GB support behind him. And uh, the coach in the corner. He's definitely the GB coach, but he's from overseas. And I've tried to work out what his nationality is without asking him. But yeah, you, you don't have to because he's Slovenian. There you go. <laughs> Who else would it be? If, but Slovenian and where are all these Slovenian coaches coming from we know there's Goraj here there's <laughs> from Slovenia Liga. and apparently okay, okay, you're stealing them all to the UK <laughs> oh dear oh dear they're probably the ones that you don't want in Slovenia actually aren't they no 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 I wouldn't go that far so right then our, our Anglo-Slovenian player Christopher Ryan 
at the table with a true Ukrainian Yezhik. Strapping on their rackets to ensure the grip in class two. Of course, the hands, you can see the palms, the fingers don't have that perfect grip. So the racket has to be fixed to the hand. Yeah, this all part of their classific classification analysis, isn't it? Uh, yeah, ensuring full control. Every eight has to be determined, allowed in the classification card, but this is nothing unusual in classes one and two. Ryan with the ball. He's ready to serve. Composes himself. Doesn't like what he sees on the bat. Good return yeah, of serve. Strong start. Put in pressure on Jezik. Long from Jezik again. Yeah, again with a little bit of luck, but uh, Ryan put in nice pressure, aggression, not allowing Jezik to recover. And with some great variation now as well, as opposed to what he was doing when he served. Looks as if his confidence is building, doesn't it? Perfectly shortened. Now, of course, Jezik won't be letting in. Very experienced player. Experience may mean that you know that his comp his competitors are getting younger and younger at the side of him. Certainly, but also perhaps nerves of steel won't let something like this throw him off. There you go. That's it. Three two. Ryan leads. He has the ball in his hand. Couldn't get the smash. Yeah, it was uh, very short here. So three apiece. Music showing off that he can do it too. And again, a towel break for the British. Let's see. A common advice with uh, the young, uh, inexperienced players, I think, to just make sure they use all the towel breaks available, which is after every six points played. That just to make sure that don't rush into things, that the nerves don't get the better of them. Jezik gives up an easy point where uh, his serve went long, but then Ryan comes back short and it's for all again. All square. Oh, that's a great shot. Brilliant exchange and the perfect finish for Ryan. A bit more action on display now in this exchange. Longer rally. Good to see. Ryan. I tried it again. The right idea, but it was a bit long and a bit too hasty, Ryan, on this one. Yeah, snatched at it, didn't he? It sat up well for him and... He just snatched. Oh! <laughs> Did he mean that one? Did he mean that better one? <laughs> than that? <laughs> yeah, he certainly meant it, but you can never be sure it will go over that well. And again from the other side, very good. Yes. Courage with his shot there. He took courage and dropped it on a sixpence, as we say. You have to go all in when it's a shot like that, it's all or nothing. And if you want to even have a chance at it all, then you have to give it all. Well said. Services with Christopher Ryan. He's been encouraged by his crowd here. He's at a table that's nearest the audience. Mm. 
once again. Very nicely angled. A lot of feeling with a lot of finesse. Yeah, a great soft touch there on the replay. You can just see it. Feels like sometimes you're watching the, the badminton soft touches that you see over the net when they drop short. Some very similar things. Is this a timeout for Jezik? Yeah, it looks like it. We didn't see the coach actually call it, but it does seem to be the case. Well, Ryan leads 8-5 and one set to love. Yeah, um. Looks like the Ukrainian coach doesn't want to see this come into a 2-0 lead for Ryan. I wonder whether in those countries as well as, as it does in the UK is that uh, you know your results can often define the kind of funding you might receive from the state. Yeah, that's now the case, I think, uh, almost everywhere. But we've just seen that uh, great point by Ryan and maybe it was just a uh, tactic to break his momentum. Jezik returns and uh, not a very expressive person so keeps his facial expressions pretty much the same win or lose keeps the cool it works better that way for some players others need the energy to motivate to pump themselves up indeed Ryan makes his adjustments. Here he comes with the serve. A nice exchange once again. And uh, Ryan wasn't great with timing on that ball. He could have reached it. But uh, yeah, when in classes one and two, once you throw yourself onto the table, there's no time to recover to get that perfect shot anymore. And that's what happened here. Cost him the point, but he makes up for it right away. Real subtle return there from Jezik, uh, sorry, from Ryan. And he stretches out to 9-6. Yeah, just a twist of the wrist and again. Wow. It's a great shot. And suddenly he's 10 6 up with the uh, set points. Four of them to be exact. Good return from Jezik and Ryan tried to go for the win there. Yes, he should. Trying to get the info from the coach as well on what he did wrong on that point, I think. Yeah, he corrected it, but he was so far out of the position that uh, Jezik could just push the ball down the line with a nice block and it was enough uh, for Ryan to stay too far. 10-8. The that towel break again. Ryan now needs it, I think. He needs to uh, difficult he's got job to get one of the two points when Jezik serves. Indeed. Gets one back. Yeah, Jezik. Jezik was waiting for that short return this time, and it was then Ryan who was too late to block it. A little bit of pressure for the young man. In this one of his early international debuts. And um, once again he was going for that short angled shot. Worked well for him before but again Jezik was there waiting and just uh, pushed the ball down the line. So which the luck is where Ryan very much was not at that point. <laughs> Indeed. His last four points have gone to the Ukrainian. He's leveled 
up the tie and he gets the benefit of the bounce there and the let puts Jezik yeah, in the lead and for the first time into a position to win the set the second one can Ryan respond and he does <laughs> he does he absolutely does induce the serves exchanged after every point two point difference needed to bring it to a close these are really good moments though for a, a young player to experience oh yeah, and he difficult gets ahead but useful ones and he's holding his ground so far again the set point Jezik swaps and Oof, Ryan's Manuel. fifth but uh, yeah Jezik perfectly on point there on the ball switched the uh, line of attack for his serve uh, Jezik and uh, yeah, he's so doing really well um, on anticipating the short angled balls and being right there where he needs to be to make them into killer shots for himself well great value for money here to the for the crowd 12 all just a second set and uh, Jezik takes a lead And just the top of the net takes it out there. That for was a shame. Five set points for Ryan, but it was only Jezik's second one that took it home for him. And now we're really tied up again. It's anyone's game at this point. One set all, as you say. 14-12 in that set. And uh, hopefully Christopher Ryan can build on that. He'll be disappointed to have lost it, as you say, at five opportunities. But Jezik is a wily old character. Yeah, you do feel as a player that you should take chances like that because they don't come uh, about <laughs> all the time. Uh, nevertheless, uh, now what's to be done is to, to take uh, motivation or some lessons for the next game, but forget, uh, forget those chances because... Um, Dwelling on, on them can only bring about a loss in the next game as well. And it's best of five sets. So could be three more, one all. It's very interesting when you see you know newcomers coming into the game playing very experienced players. Um, often provides a good competition and let's not forget uh, how important the stage uh, this is the magnitude of this competition these two are battling it on to stay in the tournament to advance to the round robin uh, to the knockout stages best of 16 to stay one of the 16 players who get a chance not only for a medal but uh, for that golden ticket to Paris next year. Indeed. Ryan himself uh, has said that uh, he doesn't think uh, anyone expects him to medal and neither does him but um, when you are at the table you of course uh, want to win every time. Well he's not putting himself under any pressure but uh, there's always pressure when you play these games the pressure of your own expectations yeah, it's easy to say you're not expecting anything uh, before the tournament but once you're at the table and you're offered chances or you have battled yourself into chances like these uh, then your expectations or at least uh, aspirations rise that's right. Well, it's as if we're 
right back at the start, one all, all square. Good serve, was that over the end of the table? Looked as if it was. Yeah, it looked uh, really close. Jezik. Sometimes difficult to see here and even for the umpires, but um, the players know best and they both agreed it was a good serve. So first two points go to Jezik. Oh, great response there from Ryan. Yeah, nicely pushed from the middle to the edge. <laughs> Just one too many balls to Jezik's forehand. He waited for that perfect one to yeah. push it into Ryan. No chance for him to defend. Three, two. Tried to do the same again, but... He, did, he got the neck cord and it took it out this time. Last time it took it into the table, so 3-2. Jezik serves. Ah, very good. Also a nice display of um, moving from one side of the table to the other by Ezik. Well-earned point, aggressive attack. Might be what he'll try to do more of now. Yeah, he just seems to be beginning to get to grips with his opponent here, Ezik. Yeah, it, does it does take a while sometimes even with the more experienced players uh, when you're facing somebody new and let's not forget these two have never competed against each other before Jezik hits the top of the net and goes out again so uh, Ryan gets the break there 4-3 he trails with the serve the lob didn't work on that occasion no, and I think Jezik was kind of hoping it would come off better, but not this time. And now it's 4 all. Jezik serves, and Ryan just couldn't quite get that corner. Fine margins. Yeah, far into the backhand side. Difficult to control the return there. Ooh, Jezik into the net. Yeah, the elbow area with the pimples, tried to return that ball. Five all. Bravo. Yeah, this time he did it right, but still Ryan was very close to returning that. Well, it seems like it's going neck and neck once again. Oh, what a great shot yeah. from Ryan. Nice push and exchange. Ryan finishing off with an angle. Jezik getting ready to serve. Six all. Nobody's giving way here yet. Oof, Oof. Here's this net that's played such a, an important role one way and the <laughs> other. <laughs> kind of rolled across. Net. But it is to be expected in, um, in uh, class two with a lot of inverted rubbers, the rotation switch. It's seven all again. Ryan with his second serve. Attacked, attacked the corner of the ball where it just came back from. So 8-7 Ryan leads. Oh, 
fancy this being five sets, Matteo? Yeah, should be from what we're seeing so far. Gentle rally here. Oh, and yes, it just forces the error out of Ryan. Eight all. Ryan put under pressure there. Yeah, very good pressure by Jezik. Push to push, exchange for a while there. And he just put more pressure on with the inverted rubber. And Jezik now. No, no, that was the wrong one to, to try and shorten it or make it into a tetra loop. Yeah, it's uh, an unfortunate error there. It's Shame taken. for Ryan now. 10-8, he trails. And he's got to try and pull this one out of the bag. Giving otherwise. Jezik two set points. He does serve, though, so he'll have some control, at least over the start of both of them. Oh, and Ryan goes wide with that and loses the third set. So having led 1-0, he now trails 2-1. Yeah, he'll now regret not uh, winning that previous one even more. But again, it's not something he should well or concentrate on right now. Right now it's game four for grabs. Alexander Jezik. Nicely showing off his experience and nothing brought him out of his concentration, his focus on uh, this match and he's now comfortably in the lead. Jezik has done well. It's, um, it's a good fight back having been 1-0 down and it'll be an important win for Jezik but I'm sure... Ryan will want to try and come back in front of his home crowd. No doubt when not now, then when. Indeed. Um, but to win two sets on the bounce will be tough. It's an, another piece of experience that he'll have in his back pocket if he can win these two sets, but one step at a time. And the Slovenian coach Looks as if gesticulating he's a lot, <laughs> isn't he? He's, uh, yeah, he's certainly not giving in, not letting Ryan do so either. They return to the table. This game already half an hour in length, and uh, the potential is it could go for at least another 15 minutes. Yeah, the closer we get to the end of the competition or the later stages of the competition, the longer the matches will go. Because, of course, we have players who are closer and closer um, in quality. And because the stakes are rising as well. They are indeed. Both players taping up. Lots of time to think about what you're going to do when you have all these preparations, things going through your mind. Yeah, it can be either a plus or a negative if you get too much into your head or overthink things. That's, that's not good either. For Ryan now just should be an opportunity to focus on what he was doing right or what he can do better yeah He's, uh, trying to settle 
utmost importance of uh, starting off from the right position again, considering how easy it is to be brought out of balance in classes one and two especially. First blood to Ryan. Music going long. And another great use of his serve. Good start now. Has to keep it up though. An entirely different pace now when Ježek was serving. Seems to be more determined to make this into a quicker game. Jezik picks up a point there as Ryan goes long, so it's two points apiece. Jezik seems to always be able to make up any gap that uh, Ryan creates. We're back both uh, now using their own serve opportunities to win the points. Long from Ryan, three all. Speaking to himself a lot there, isn't he? Yeah, the, Ryan the seems British to player. start being a little bit agitated. Not sure that's great. Understandable though. Jezik serves and goes wide and, and wins the point. Great return there, wasn't it? Even wider than uh, Ryan could reach. Good decision. It could be a breaking point in this game. Slovenian coaches know what they're doing. <laughs> and Jezik is just relaxing there. He's uh, pleased. Doesn't need any advice. Has been playing the la well the last uh, two and this the third set. Yeah, he hasn't allowed himself to be brought out of concentration so far, so I don't think this timeout will do much damage to him in that sense. It's whether Ryan can just absorb some of his uh, agitation he looks a little bit jumpy but you know it's to be expected if this is early on in his international career um, yeah, and right away the European Championships at home yeah it's a uh, it's a big one and he's done well but uh, Jezik's just so solid and experienced. Stoically sat in his chair there. And Ryan will be looking now to try and stay on this court in this competition for as long as possible, surely. Yeah. So. Strapped up. These breaks in play are quite long breaks for players to just be sitting and waiting and thinking. Yeah, but in these classes they are also used to it, so it's all part of the game. You just adapt your rhythm to, to that dynamic. And, and 
And here we go. Yeah. Sviezik not brought out of his comfort zone at all here. Ryan looking to make some headway against this stoic Ukrainian. Did great with the serve, actually. But missed with the follow-up shot, and suddenly it's 7-3. And beginning to slip away. Yeah, I don't think he was expecting the sort of return he got. No. Now, I'm not sure if that... Uh, it did touch the edge of the table. Looks like it. So 8-3 to Jezik. And what was a tight match is now slipping away from the Brit. Eight four. Pumps his hands. This clearly means a lot. Just doesn't seem to be able to play consistently over a few points and uh, it's easier said than done, but yeah, which is another trait of uh, inexperienced new players, really. Consistency and accuracy is something you get with training. Serves here. Did a good shot there. Stretch Jezik further than he was comfortable with. Oh, well played, Ryan, and well played, Jezik, actually, but... Well done to Ryan for staying in this. Ooh. Luck was not on his side. Right tried to do everything right it just didn't work out 9-6 for Alexander Jerzyk getting closer to that victory and he goes long Ryan battles that one out yeah he resisted the temptation to only play for that um, angled wide out where Jerzyk was waiting switched it to the middle elbow area and it's paid dividend three points in a row now yeah brings it back to nine eight could well use another one well returned there from ryan Oh, he tried to change he the angle. He tried again for the angle. With not enough decision and precision. So he's facing... Two match balls now and it's Jezik serving. So an even more demanding task ahead. And quietly Jezik has just advanced to this position. Feel the tension. Oh, and he was just once long. again not decisive enough. Unsure of what to do. Probably a disappointing loss for the Brit, but uh, he has nothing to be sorry about. His first competition ends quickly, uh, but a lot to take home. Two trainings, two to the next competitions and to, I'm sure, uh, his promising rest of table tennis career. Well, 42 minutes for that game, Matteo. So it was uh, a long time at the table and uh, just slaps his head on his way out, frustrated with himself, but he was close and getting closer. Well, that's a win for 
Oleksandr Jezik. And uh, we'll be back with our game at uh, quarter past five on table one, which will see Andela Muzinic Vincetic, if I've got that almost right. Muzinic Vincetic Andela will be, or is it An Angela? Angela. 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 Yeah, but. And Sanya Miatovic. Almost there. Almost there. <laughs> And so we will be back shortly as soon as we finish off all the matches in this round with women's singles class three. Indeed. Well, welcome back to the English Institute of Sport here in Sheffield where players are warming up on table one and this is uh, group one women's wheelchair and class three and, uh, and Angela Muzinic Vincetic I'm trying my very best to get that name right from Croatia and uh, a very very complete player playing Sanja Mijatovic from Serbia and uh, always a little bit of rivalry between these two nations in any sport yeah the Croats a clear favorite here world number two silver medalist from last year's world championships Sanja Mijatovic on the other hand 
world number 16 in women's singles class three lost all of the nine encounters between the two the last one last year at the montenegrin para championships 3-0 no doubt the croatian will be looking to repeat that score today here as well right. having already won 3-0 against the two other players in this group Michela Brunelli of Italy and Hatiz Zuman from Turkey on the other hand two losses for Miatovic so she's effectively already out of competition as only the best two players from each group advance to the knockout stages in this case directly to the semi-finals and into a medal position thank you for that explanation and first blood to the Serb one apiece I'd love to see who the number one in the world is because uh, it's uh, a Korean player is right I believe so not competing here <laughs> at the European Championships clearly Yeah, nothing but gold will satisfy Angela Muzinic here and that ticket to Paris next year will where he'll be she'll be looking to medal for the first time in singles at the Paralympic stage as well I see so yeah great pathway in front of her it's two apiece great serve yeah first it she get, has to go through this match has that been ruled si uh, down at the side? Yeah, I don't think uh, Muzinic is happy with that decision, but won't let bother her. Oh. Or shouldn't, at least. No, she looked a bit frustrated. Trails 2-3. Three. Three yeah, trying to warm up her backhand now, successfully so far. Great defense here from... Yeah, great uh, exchange Miatovic. by Muzinic mm. reacting to the inverted rubber. So playing topspin on one of the returns, backspin on the next one. Once again, same thing. Just didn't need to do it for that long in this exchange. She's so quick. The number two seed. And that came off the side yeah, of the table. Yeah, that was clearly an out. Didn't cross the end line as it should in wheelchair para table tennis. Good. Another point for the Serb. Yeah, she's hanging in. 5-4. But this is uh, Muzinic Vincetic's style. Aggressive attacking top spin game. Bit of coach banter going on there. So uh, that's a let, isn't it? It's a net related let. Net let. Successfully on this one. Deep into the wide backhand, long on the line. Always looking for those corners just between a let and the regular serve. Yeah, well, <coughs> slowly the Croats is extending her lead, 7 4 now. That looked as if it'd gone long. 
And I is the, believe so, yes. And if the rule is you hit the ball and it's still over the table... Yeah, over the table, then it would be, of course... Um, a point? Yeah. To the, op to the opponent, yeah. But that wasn't the case here. It's just with the uh, wheelchair players sitting so close to the table and with those angles, it's sometimes difficult to tell what exactly happened for us watching it on screen, but uh, in most cases, not for them. Nice play there from Mijatovic. Yeah, very good uh, return. 8-6, she trails, but still fighting away. Yeah, still aggressively with the backhand side, Muzinic, rightfully so. And that was slightly long from the Serb, so 9-6, the Croatian leads. Oof, that was an aggressive backhand, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, as in all of the others, just not finished off correctly. 9-7. Was that out to the side or? 10-7, judged to be just over the baseline. So set point. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> what a point to finish. Uh, it was a nice uh, switch with the serve and then down the line. So earned first game for Angela Muzinic, bronze medalist from the last European Championships in singles four years ago, though. Well, this Normally we see European Championships in para table tennis every two years, but um, of course Corona yes. postponed some of that along with the Paralympic Games. So she's gone from bronze to potentially potentially gold for the Europeans. <laughs> yes, but still, still a way to go there. Eight players started off this competition in women's singles class eight four will be meddling and continuing tomorrow or the with the semi-finals have you seen anyone who could rival the croat she looks uh, uh, she's strong. been one of the best player if not the best in the world in the many cases and especially in europe for a few years now, so um, I think it's her to lose. It's hers to lose, lose. but mm, yeah. um, <laughs> you still have to do the work. You never know. You can have a bad day. Uh, somebody can ha else can have a good one, and it's those matches that you need to battle through. That's true. Very true. So one set to nil. The Croatian leads. Hits long. Composes herself on the serve and quickly into it. And gets a good point there. Yeah, nicely played. Long serve, short return. With an angle. Oof, the speed of yeah, that she shot. She was ready on that one, right on the forehand, wonderful top spin down the line. Even Mijatovic uh, clapped that one. Oh, from once again. Yeah, this is it. And again, a great switch between the down the line shot that she did in the previous point and cross court now. Forehand those. Just keeping the opponent guessing. That looked long. We'll serve again, 3-2 to the Croatian. Great rally, oof. 
Oof, such a nice rally and uh, Muzinic did everything right, just came out a bit short. 3 all, 3 all. some good recovery there from the Serb as the ball hit the net, she adjusted well. Tried to go down the line there, didn't she? And just hit the net again, so... Yeah, Muzinic continues to put the pressure with the serve and searching for those long either deep uh, backhand positions or elbow positions, both difficult to take. Is that a let call? Yeah, the serve yeah. with the serve as well. You can see the Serb flip the racket to serve with the smooth rubber. Puts a lot of backspin on the ball. At the moment she's just struggling to contain the Croat. 6-3 she trails. And one set to love. Yeah, that was not bad, but better from Vinic. Again, good return, moving the opponent from one side to the other. Lead 7-3, and long from the Croat. And she does none of the shots halfway. <laughs> so just there's either a lot of top spin or a lot of back spin on each of her shots. There you go. Looks easy, but so much spin and precision. And speed, I, I would just say how quickly the ball's coming back. Textbook book forehand down the line shot, really. Jatovic now trailing 9 4. Yeah, looks, this uh, looks a lot more like what we expected to see. In I this setup between these two. Goes long there. It's Six just set ball now mm -hmm. balls now. <laughs> Takes the first one already and it's two zero. After only a couple of minutes here on court one. Yep. Angela Muzinic, Vincetic very much um, on track as the favorite to win this competition. Well, she just builds pressure on you, doesn't she? Because the returns keep coming back quicker and quicker. Great to see some of those shots on the replay. Side on, they look so much quicker when they come through. That's a great rally on the replay as well. Yeah, and Muzinic has everything but earned that point so still it was enough of others for her to to grab so she looks like a player who might be here for a few more years yet the the croat do you think you would certainly hope so unless there's an injury or something like that happening she in para sports uh, careers can take long looks like she needs a bit of coffee <laughs> yeah, yeah, like but you will you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't say it uh, looking at how she's playing no just slapping her face and waking herself up she yeah, to make sure she keeps doing what she needs to Like we said, it's easy to come in as a favorite, but you have to show it at the table every single time as well. It's a point well made and one apiece. Jatovic to serve. Ooh, and 
and just missed out on that shot just over the net. Yeah, but it's just all a consequence of uh, how accurately long pressured uh, those uh, balls by um, Muzinic are. Oof. Every single kill. time she does not leave room to breed. No holding back, as you say, and uh, two apiece in the score. Two sets to love to the Croat. Yeah, this one was slightly, for slightly forced, I would say. She's so Miatovic goes three two up. And four to up. Do you think the Serb is playing safety first, just keeping the rally going, right, keeping the rally going? Yeah, she's definitely trying to, but I, I wouldn't necessarily say it's succeeding. And I mean, at this point, you have to do something. Four three to the Croat. Wow, oh. that's a <laughs> wow, what a return. That was right on the racket really. All the Serb had to do was position the racket in the right angle and uh, everything else was done with the force of uh, Angela's shot. Re yes, returning. But then another great play from the Croat to respond. Hit the corner deep. That's great agility there as well, coming out of the chair, reaching into those shots. Yeah, I was ready with that back and top spin uh, as well, Muzinic, but she didn't have to take the so shot that as it went. The ball went over the table and again. Yeah, 7-4 now to the Croat as Miatovic is beginning to struggle with the sheer pace of the Croatians' play. Seven five. Point back there for the for the Serb. No yeah, prisoners apology, there. Apology, but uh, <laughs> really it was just an excellent shot. Some amazing force is created, these players. Yeah, but also beautiful timing and the rest of the execution. It's not just force, but the right kind of force. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Two soft top spin shots and then the third one when she was right in the position to make it stronger, she did so. 9-5, the Croatian leads and uh, just keeps marching on. And now some finally some pressure with that backhand inverted rubber by the Serb. No rotation on that ball but a great angle. Try to go yeah. down the line there. Right idea, Miatovic was not there, but maybe a little bit difficult to, to execute from where she was picking up that shot. Is that off the yeah, side? Yeah, that, that was out. Yeah. And Muzinic admits it right away. Like I said, the players usually see it best. Gets the edge of the table. Yeah, 
had just over so close that uh, Muzinic couldn't take it with that forehand she had prepared, but did this Oof. one. <laughs> no doubts there. 10 8. And uh, that's going to be. Two match points for the medal for Angela Muzinic here. One more chance to bring this to a close. Just long there, wasn't she? 10 9. Absolutely the leg call there and uh, tension continues. Oh, <laughs> what, <laughs> what a way to finish this off! Uh, right on the sideline. 3-0 for Angela Muzinic in her third match at this competition. She will finish as the winner of this Group 1 in Women's Singles Class 3. And this is the first one to have secured herself a medal at this competition. Needless to say, uh, she will not be satisfied with just that. No doubt looking uh, to continue this all the way to the final, to the gold medal and to the direct ticket for Paris next year. End of competition for Sanya Miatovic though with three losses in yeah. this same group. <coughs> uh, but um, perhaps some valuable experience to, to take back to trainings anyway. So thank you Matteo. That was a comprehensive win for the Croatian. And we'll be back with the six o'clock game, uh, which is wheelchair class four women's um, Ingele Lundback and Megan Shackleton from Great Britain, the Swede Ingele Lundback, her opponent. We'll see you shortly.
Welcome back to IS Sheffield and to the European Para Table Tennis Championships 2023 here in Sheffield on Table 1. Once again, Gavin Maguire from the Irish Para National Team and myself, Matea Pintar, and so are Inga Lalunbeck of Sweden and Megan Shackleton for Great Britain in women's singles class 4 and 5. Battling it on for that desired second place in the round robin group three to continue with the competition in the knockout stages later on. Both of them having beaten Andrea Dolinar 3 0 and having lost to Sandra Mikolasek 0 3. Not much head to head to speak of between the two. Three previous matches went to Ingela Lundbeck. One win for Megan. Worth mentioning as well that uh, this is a combined class of four and five. Megan, a representative of class four, world number 11 in her class. Ingela Lundbeck at an advantage here world number seven but in class five and Gavin you said that this is your third Megan Shackleton match so I'm sure you'll have a lot to say about this here yeah I'm starting to become an expert in Megan Shackleton's game um, she's had a, as you mentioned one win one loss probably second performance she would have been much happier with she was a little bit more herself so I guess she'll be looking to keep growing into this tournament now. Yeah, still coming back from an injury, a long, long injury. <laughs> Trying to find her confidence and uh, what, what better place to come back on top as the home European Championship. Back a super experienced player on tours ever since 2005 in international para table tennis and has medaled at every major competition ever since either in singles or in team event stronger start for her here as yeah, well pretty impressive statistic that a lot of medals to her name and that's going to be a, a big task for Megan to overcome. It's been a while since the two last played each other, all the way back in 2016. <laughs> you would like to think that uh, since then, Megan has only got better, despite the uh, despite the lengthy injury. Obviously, you would expect her level has gone up, and Angela maybe is coming a little bit more towards the back end of her career. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't look like that in in the start of this uh, first game here. Strong lead and um, strong performance, I would say. The rally is more to your taste as well. A little bit more attack and play, yeah, more my style, but I can enjoy any form of play.
finding her way into this, Megan. Just a little bit of a tentative start here. A few unforced errors. Maybe measuring Ingela Lumbach a little bit. Uh, she needs to pick it up soon. Oof, perfect angle. This is how I used to beat Ingela. <laughs> <laughs> you tell us the tactics, Matteo. Don't think Megan's style of play would agree with those much. But yeah, that works. So a little bit more backspin on the ball. Forcing the error from Lindbeck. Nice counter attack then again. Backspin ball, Lumbach starts, and Megan is ready to counter attack into the corner. Yeah, I myself wouldn't necessarily go into these fast exchanges with Lumbach. Yeah, she's quite quick there, isn't she? Over the table, she looks strong. Yeah, great reach and balance as well. was ready for that serve. Megan's used it before. And quite a clear win for her. Yeah, she looked quite comfortable there, Lumbach, really. Some errors from Megan Shackleton, but also a lot of strong play there from Lumbach. Backhands down the line into, into Megan Shackleton's backhand, putting them under, under pressure. And also, as you mentioned, really strong reach out the forehand to play good topspin balls. A few replays on the screen now showing you just that. Yeah, so quickly from one angle to the other. Yeah, absolutely. And you can just see how Megan was brought out of the balance, but not Ingela. Yeah, she looks really confident, really assured. She, ne she hasn't looked out of position once, really. Yeah, and that is a little bit of a difference between uh, classes four and five as well. On display. And you were a class three, Matea, so tell us, how, you do, how did you beat a class five? How was that good? Uh, yeah, no, but it's, um, I was a defensive player, clearly, so uh, none of these fi fast exchanges <laughs> for me, at least not too many. So if you're coaching Megan, you're telling her to slow things down? It's difficult to say because you have to be the right player for that. And one of my things was also trying to force the opponent into what, what, what I want to do, not just me doing <laughs> what they would find more difficult. Robinson in her corner. Megan surely got the right advice. Just has to bring it to the table now. Well, we've spoken a bit about Neil already, haven't we, today? I mean, he's uh, obviously super experienced. He knows exactly what Megan should be doing out there and let's hope he is able to impart some of that knowledge. And he's coached against Ingela a lot of other players as well, not just Megan, so he's familiar with with her.
good. When you finish it off with the shot, then no need for long exchanges. So good, the ball boy had to go running outside the court. Still choosing that fast attacking style, Megan, but this one she looks a little bit more a little bit more ready. Placement of the ball is a little bit better. Expecting a few more good rallies. Yeah, this seems to be working better. Just uh, switching Ingela from from that backhand side that she likes to play actually quite far into the forehand. Bit of contention here now. Around the serve. Lumbach claiming that her serve was wide of the table and she should be able to retake, but Megan not happy with that. I think the contention here, Megan is saying that she received the ball, so if she's decided that the ball was behind the end line, the play should continue. It doesn't look like she was successful with that argument. No, but followed up by a mistake service from Lundbeck. So maybe it got to her a little bit. <laughs> Heavy backspin service there from Megan Shackleton. Returned directly into the net. just see the varying mistakes on receive there from Lumbach. More so to do with the quality of Megan's service. First one heavy backspin, second one heavy topspin. And both of them well positioned into, like I said, she likes to take uh, the ball with her backhand far into the forehand side. Again here, but with the backspin. taken Megan a bit of an adjustment playing a left-handed player of course that dreaded elbow area in in a different position of the table as she would be used to yeah absolutely probably takes a little bit of time to get adjusted but she set herself up with six more set points here Good, it, it, that is the trouble with Ingela. A lot of uh, a lot of that comes back. I think we'll see a time now here. Yeah, time now from Neil Robinson. Just realizing the importance of winning this set and getting to one all, rather than potentially being two zero down. So I think a good time out. Yeah, like we said, an experienced player and coach. Yeah. All about picking these moments, the crucial moments in the game and telling Megan now she's got the service, where she needs to place it, what she needs to do. Take that set and come back 1-1. seeing some replays on the screen now a lot higher quality this set than the first set and funny enough 
Megan had a 10-4 lead with both players playing quite high quality. Yeah, there were a few easier mistakes by Lundbeck in the middle of this uh, second game. Hopefully for Megan, she can now bring it to a close with her serve. That defensive style we spoke about that Lundbeck maybe doesn't like. Yeah, perfect. Works a treat. <laughs> Just, Just like, like you know I would have done it. About, <laughs> You are a Paralympic champion, so I have to say you know what you're saying. You know what? Just come think of it. I also still am the current European Open champion. <laughs> Does that tournament exist anymore? No, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Ingela Lundbeck I won against in the semi-finals of that tournament. <laughs> so and the final? I was Alena Hanova. Both of them still battling it on here <laughs> at the championships while I've been away for a long while. We're living it up in the commentary booth. Back to the action here now, coming back 1-1. Players returning to the table. Momentum would certainly be with Megan Shackleton, but that doesn't mean anything. Shaky Megan with her serve now. No harm done yet. Into that middle point there, the crossover as we call it. Not sure to take a backhand or a forehand. Leads to an error from Lumbeck. You can see now she's taking that backhand in that point. Wonderful. Perfect opportunity for attack. A really strong start from Megan Shackleton. Looking good here in the early exchanges. It seems uh, Lundbeck lost that uh, touch for the block, for the return, a little bit with that pushing game. Yeah, she's just having a word with herself there in between the points. Start again, I think. Visibly frustrated. Wouldn't expect that offer after all the years uh, in competition, but again, I've played her many times before, so I do know that that's typical of <laughs> her. <laughs> and she's catching back on. A bit of luck, backhand topspin, just clipping the net, putting Megan off there. Still great with the serve variation, Megan. 
Yeah, we've spoken about it already, but one of the best serves in, in women's wheelchair table tennis. Certainly seems to win the majority of those exchanges when Megan plays that defensive backspin ball. Lumbach makes some mistakes. I mean, I don't want to give you too much credit, Matea, but your, your tactic is proving a winner. And while Megan is certainly capable of those attacking exchanges and winning points, I would go for the sure thing. So what I say. Yeah, it's always what you say. Good for Megan now, building up the lead once again. 10-4, we went the same score as last set, but clawed it back to 10-8, Lumbach, so am I going to be looking to take it a bit earlier and quicker this time? And an unforced error from Lumbach gives Megan the 11-4 win and a 2-1 lead. Certainly something to capitalize on in the next one. getting a chance to take advice on board now from the coaches and a chance to get some water and much needed towel break it's getting warm here in England not uh, only with the air but also with the stakes in the competition well, it's, the competition is starting to heat up all right it's it's hot under the bright lights of the European Championships And this is a battle for a spot in the knockout stage of the competition to continue with this tournament. mistake not what you need at this moment but certainly something Megan can live with yeah I think she'd be happy enough yeah the Swedish coach trying to just calm Ingela down a bit Probably a Swedish time now coming here if, if uh, Megan takes this point. Or not? Yeah, it should be, but um, it might also be the case that uh, Ingela is considered uh, such uh, an experienced player that she was supposed to be taking her own time out. Oh, this is a bit surprising for me as well. Surely now at 6-0 we're going to see it. Yeah, just everything goes Megan's way right now. If nothing else, a towel break <laughs> could be a good idea.
Coach still reluctant to call it. Ingela not taking a timeout. 7 0, Megan in total control. Might be thinking it's too late now. By the gestures uh, giving up a little bit here. Yeah, well, we're talking about the highest stakes in the game here, European Championships. Fight till the end. And another service mistake. We're, we're moving towards the dreaded donut. Not anymore. Very good. Just so controlled. Ever since she lost the first set, now Megan has just stepped it up in terms of control. Balls on the table. And following Matea's advice, keeping more defensive, controlled, angled play. Big win. What a rally and what a win for Megan Shackleton. In front of the home crowd, takes the victory over Ingela Lundbeck from Sweden. Women's singles, class five. Is finished in the round robin and it will be Megan Shackleton proceeding to the best of eight or the quarterfinals if you will one more win needed to secure a medal Ingela Lundbeck on the other hand finished with the singles competition but we'll be back with you on table one shortly
past five. It was Savantara from France and Gerardus van Brunsven from Netherlands. The umpire is Master Smith from England. Table six, men's singles plus eleven. Timothy Ivaldi from France. Florian Harting from Germany. The umpire is Paul Nichols from England. On table seven, men's singles plus eleven. Antoine Zau from France. And Damien Fira from Poland. The umpire is Sheila Walsh from England. On table eight, men's singles plus eleven. Valery Vlasenko from Ukraine and Gary Polkas from Turkey. The umpire is Peter Higgins from Wales. On table nine, men's singles class 11, Masic Makadu from Poland, Bukku Kavaroglu from Turkey, umpire Daniel Bullen from England. On table 10, men's singles plus 11, Eduardo Custa Martinez from Spain, Timo Abujanov from Finland, umpire Harry Dubble from England. On table 11, women's singles plus 9, Carolina Peck, Mirjana Lusik from Croatia, umpire Tamara Armentalat from France. Table 12, women single class 9, Neslihan Abbas from Turkey, Irina Shinkarova from Ukraine, umpire Richard Horsfield from England. Welcome back to the English Institute of Sport here. We're at uh, the Para-European Table Tennis Championships and uh, we're on table one where we have the matchup between Jack Hunter-Spivey from Great Britain and from the Netherlands, Sem Roloffs. And this is uh, wheelchair men's class five and I'm joined by Gavin Maguire from Ireland, Team Ireland. And uh, we'll be looking forward to potentially British victory here but who knows Jack under Spivey picking up a Commonwealth Games medal at Birmingham 2022 and uh, up against Roloff here from the Netherlands under Spivey now in the program for approaching Six, seven, eight years, I think, for Team GB. And this is a very important one for Jack now, having lost 3 0 earlier on against Pali Kuche, who turned out to be the group winner. This is now the head to head battle for second place in the group. And Jack Hunter Spivey really needs this game. Well, I've actually in the past had the pleasure of sharing the floor with Jack Hunter Spivey at uh, one or two um, school motivational events where he came in and told us some quite um, startling personal truths about his career through to table tennis and how table tennis has pretty much saved him. And uh, it's great to hear. 
Opens up with that point there. Roloff goes long. I think we're settling on the word roll-off, aren't we? But uh, we're not sure. As I said to you just off air, Yuri, I'll leave all the pronunciation issues to you. In terms of head-to-head, -head, these guys have played twice on the international tour. Jack Hunter Spivey taking both 3-0 and 3-0. So heavy favourite here going into this, but we are at the European Championships. Anything can happen. Currently leads 2-1. Spivey there trying to go cross-court with the winner, but just goes a little bit long. Two apiece. Exciting. Spivey just couldn't get that one back. 3-2. Going with serve. 4-2. Towel breaks coming in regularly here. Yeah, every, every six points is an authorised towel break for the player, so often used as a... Uh, Chances to take a breather, have a little word to oneself and get focused on the next point. Or even to break momentum of the other player. Great shot from Hunter Spivey there. So on the replay, loved that one. Getting pumped up a little bit. A good turnout here for Hunter Spivey. GB crowd staying behind. Shot there from the, the Dutchman. Takes it 3-5 at the moment. It's a good start for, for Roloffs. Uh, you really, one would think that he's got to get a good point on the board here. First set in the bag if he wants to have a chance against Jack. So he started well. He's certainly gone three points up at the moment and uh, early success for the Dutchman. Just trying something different there, Jack, with the high ball. Something that didn't really work for him earlier on either. So maybe something to cut out or we've got to start to see it work soon. And so Gets a point back there with a good serve. Just seems a little bit frustrated with himself. Yeah, there were visible signs he wasn't happy earlier on. I think he didn't produce his best level. But one thing he can say about Jack is he will absolutely fight till the end and he'll show every bit of fight that he can. Picks up a point there, 5-8, he trails. Picks up another one. Grab his serve now. A good comeback there from Jack, but still trailing by two Yo! nice angled ball out to the wide backhand of Roloffs unable to reach He's pumping himself up here seriously isn't he um, playing yeah. to the crowd which he knows he's under pressure if he goes 1-0 down he, he knows this set's really important oh an amazing rally there That's gone long off the top of the net, but 8-9. The Dutchman serves. Spivey goes long there, so suddenly facing set points. 10-8 down. Couldn't handle the spin on that one.
important can he get back into this one straight away does so very good good switch of play there top spin serve from the forehand side and then switch back out to the backhand of Roloffs is the serve again Playing the percentages here, both. Yeah. That's, oh, that's a big miss from Roloff there. He had his chance. High ball presented itself. And Jack Hunter's baby lives on in this set. Ten apiece. Very yeah. intense and gets a goal. Brilliant angle. Fantastic angle. Such a big part of para table tennis, exploiting the angles and exploiting your opponent's reach. So, Hunter Spivey with leading 11 10 on serve. Goes short, but a good response there from the Dutchman. Seemed to anticipate that short serve, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Jack looking at his racket, I'm not sure it was the racket. All square, 11 all. Good reach, and the Dutchman goes long. Spivey recovered well, that was a hell of a reach. And he's got match, a set point again. And achieves an important victory really good backhand you saw a couple of times towards the end of that game there Jack Hunter Spivey going strong with his backhand wider and wider each time and Roloffs has no answer for that that's a good recovery from the from the Brit yeah but I can't help but think Roloffs will be ruining that chance at 10-9 when he had a high ball nonetheless great performance from Jack to come back and take it just seeing some of the replays. That's a great boost for the Britain. And uh, always good to win that close game. Pressure builds on your opponent once you've done that. This is class three, so I'm, yeah, I'm looking at this and it says uh, it says five actually on my class five. I'm reading group three, class five. Do apologize. So the guys returning to the table. You can feel the tension because they're certainly taking every moment to take out those timeouts and preparations and it's extremely warm under those lights I think it's it's warm up here without the lights in the commentary booth it's uh, extremely warm out in the field of play no air conditioning whatsoever and the Dutchman opens up with a good point These players like to have the ball they've chosen, don't they? Yo! Nice angle change there from Spivey. Wide in the backhand. Seems to be the place he's getting the majority of points right now. Let call. Umpire is actually not happy with the height that Roloffs was throwing the ball up. Ah, thank you. Yo! That was coming from behind him and deep there, be beneath the height of the table. Tough shot, that wouldn't for Roloffs. Hunter with the lob. Oh! Was that a miscalculation or? 
bad timing it seemed to be in his grasp for the smash it's very small margins there in terms of timing if he allows it to go one second longer it's going to backspin towards Jack if he takes it too early he's not going to make good connection it's got to be absolutely perfect and just slightly missed time there Four one to Spivey. He's fired up now, isn't he? <laughs> he certainly is. It's great to have that kind of energy from the wheelchair boys. Is that a timeout? Yeah, we're seeing a timeout there from the Dutch this coach. Man. He knows that if it goes two zero, it's probably too big an ask. So he's got to try and claw his way back in here. Is that the way Hunter Spivey normally plays? Does he pump fists and? He's one of the most emotive players on the tour. Absolute value for money to watch. It's good to see the, the passion, enthusiasm. Getting a few words of wisdom now from the head of British para table tennis, Andrew Rushton. Such a decent table tennis player himself, actually. Absolutely. He's been around the block, the English senior senior team for a number of years and still competing in the Swiss Professional League so I noticed there's um, an American Pro League just opened up in the USA yeah yeah the MLS of table tennis now they're starting to do a, a new production there really trying to give table tennis a go trying to promote it to the masses so hopefully well, that'd be interesting If anyone can commercialise a league, it's the uh, the Americans. <clears throat> so Spivey returns to the table, 4-1, and gets Yo! a quick point there as the Dutchman misses the corner. Another towel break. Is that allowed straight after the... Yeah, within six points, every six points, it doesn't oh, matter what's you. happened in between. 5-1. Here's the lob. A little bit of luck there, clipping the net. Almost impossible for Roloff to touch there. 6-1 uh, to Spivey. Acknowledges he had the bit of luck. Go oh, into the net. It's kind of fallen to pieces, pieces. here, Roloff, mm. really. 7-1. It's an opportunity to uh, completely stamp out his opponent. If he can drive this home. What a great play from Strong Spivey. Man. Yeah, this is a little bit more like the jack that we we know and, and love. That was just a bit long, looked, uh, looked close enough, so 8-2. But these things can turn, as you say, so momentum can swing quickly. And super five. the top spin. Wow. Rodolf's taking the ball on, attack, and straight back at him, down the throw from Jack Hunter Spivey. And you know, the first set didn't seem to, uh, didn't, to seem, didn't seem as if it was going to be such one-sided. There's the lob, and he's worked that perfectly. Wow. Well, you've just explained, you know, if he lets it bounce and it's gone. Spinning back and 10-2. And uh, he's, a very, he's a very rhythmical player, Jack. You know, when he gets on a roll, he's almost untouchable. And he just couldn't get that roll earlier on in his, in his first game against Pali Kucha. But he's, he's certainly firing now. Wow. This guy is drilling it home. 11-2. And the first set didn't look anything like that this particular game and uh, credit to Hunter Spivey who's just demolished his man there's that high ball now a little bit of luck off the net did it a couple of times in the set And Hunter Spivey has a, not a different serve, but it's a different serve in terms of to uh, Roloff's 
choosing a different grip for the serve. Yeah, Jack Hunter Spivey will be going for a forehand more conventional for able body table than it's the way Jack is serving. Um, Roll-offs tending to use backhand serve, which is a little bit more common in, in para. Obviously, we're, we're talking about class five here, so it's the yeah. most uh, the most physically capable class in terms of wheelchair table tennis, so it is quite close to standing and able body table tennis in terms of what they're trying to do. Well, in all the games I've watched so far, I've not seen a five-setter where someone has won the, the next three on the bounce, having trailed 2-0, and oh, so... But still, everything is possible. And uh, into Spivey. Tries the lob straight away. Not successful. An early lead. Yeah, 2 just, and 0. Just the start he needs, roll offs. To uh, try and make a comeback here. And yeah, Spivey. Needs to assert himself again with serve. Roloffs showing some spirit. Three quick points. Picks up the first. Roloffs to serve. 3 1 up. And to Spiver picks up another point there. 2 3. Important one for Roloffs now. Try and keep his little lead that he has. Yeah. He does so. Really important now to stay with serve, try and stay two ahead at all times if he wants to try and win this set. But we've got to take one of the Hunter Spivey services now. Is the serve such an advantage at this level? No. Wow, great no. shot. Yeah, service, I mean, it's the only time that you're in total control of what happens. So, ball is in your hand, you've got total control. You can really serve in a way that you're trying to get what you want back from your opponent in terms of spin, placement, playing to your own strength. So generally it's a huge advantage. And for all Roll can just continue to win his own service and take one of Jacks each time. That's what he'd be looking for. Great recovery. What a, that was a great rally from, from my layman perspective. Certainly going for it, both guys. Uh, Spider picks up the point, 5-4. Any level. Oh, that high ball, really, wow. really nice one there from Jack. You could see Roloffs was on his bike there, trying his best. <laughs> Thought he'd gone for the towel, but he hadn't. So, five apiece. Oh. Wow, stuff. that was a tremendous change of direction for the winning shot, and he's won the last three points. Put himself six five ahead. And with serve now. Too strong. Too strong from Jack there, huge ball into the middle. That crossover point where Roloffs has to try and make a decision in an instant between backhand and forehand, and he just caught fresh air there. Oh. Jack's come aligned, hasn't he? Literally, he's just uh, found the fuse. He was 2-4 down. Come back with a 5-1 run. Great shot from the Dutchman. Big fist from the Dutchman as well. He's not going away just yet. Yeah. 
an entertaining game, this one. And there's that well recovered. Yeah, I just feel like Jack tries that maybe a little, a little bit, bit too, too often in the class five. These guys have great mobility. And if he doesn't get it absolutely perfect, puts himself under a lot of pressure. He still has the advantage, 7-6. Good rally developing. Oh, he tried to go for that deft touch there, didn't he? Seven all. Grit from the Dutchman, there's no doubt about that. He knows this is his last chance, really. He's out of the tournament if he doesn't win here. Spivey uh, goes long. So, 8-7. Is nine seven advantage to roll offs. No. Spivey picks one up nine eight. Will this be a repeated a first set potentially? Yeah, that's right. No. Oh, you can see it. He's coming back now again, Jack. Roll offs in your mind now. You're starting to think about. I had a chance in the first. I missed it. I was 9 7 up here. I'm 9 9 now. Is he in his own head? 9 9. Went to Spivey, I think, wanted to make some adjustments. He's just fixing the strap at his feet there. I'm sure his legs are staying in. He has to serve now. You think he's going to go long or short? Long. Oh, well played by the Dutchman. Gives him a set point. It's a second set point of the game for Roloffs, and let's see, does he take this one? Oh, long, unforced error. Another unforced error. This is mimicking the first set completely, ten apiece. And another oh unforced my. error. I can tell you what, if this Dutchman loses here, he's not going to be able to sleep tonight. Not at all, and he's facing match point. Hunter Spivey with the serve. Oh, what a way to win it. He won it, 3-0. Great game. Top performance from Jack Hunter Spivey. Maybe not his absolute best tailwinds of his career, but after a difficult morning, a big 3-0 win and into the next round there. And some good table dance on show for the fans here in Sheffield. Yeah, applauds the crowd, thanks them very much, and uh, I think he'd be thanking you for the kiss of death, Mr. Roloffs, <laughs> <laughs> saying this is just exactly what happened in the first set. 13 11, 11 2, 12 10 to Jack Hunter Spivey. He lives to fight another day, and we'll be back with you shortly for the final game of the evening on table one which will between, be between Thomas Matthews and Adam Urlauber from Hungary. Matthews from Great Britain. See you shortly.
goes to class 7, Uber and Coco, from 13, Fly to me, from Great Britain. Take on fire, Aaron Kirby Center, from Norway. Table 7, Valentina Marchaver, from Bulgaria. And Nora Cornelius Houston, from Norway. Umpire Sheila Walsh from England. On the table it's Miller Agnes Lydia Sam from Sweden. And Jeffrey Slatter from Norway. Jonathan Whittaker, the umpire from Scotland. And welcome back to Sheffield. The English Institute of Sport is the home of the European Paratable Tennis Championships 2023. I'm joined by Gavin Maguire from the Irish team here competing at the championships. Good evening to you in our final game, Gavin. And we have British interest at heart. We have Matthews from Great Britain taking on the Hungarian. Adam Erlauber, I hope we got that one right, and Thomas Matthews ready to play. They'll be warming up first, so this is the last match of the game and of the evening. And we've just seen Jack Hunter Spivey come through his particular match. And this is uh, Group 2, but Class 5 in the wheelchair. Apologies, this is class one in the wheelchair. Misread the, uh, the match number alongside it, so class one. My colleague Gavin McGuire is fully on it. I didn't want to say, didn't want to say, Yuri, but uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely class one's on show here. Absolutely. In terms of. Uh, previous meetings these guys don't have any previous meetings on the tour before so that might make for an interesting game however Thomas Matthews much uh, much higher ranked seven in the world a number of major titles in in team and singles to his name so he would be heavy favorite here it's looking that way and uh, we saw a great game just the one beforehand where Jack Hunter Spivey took a 3-0 win over his uh, Dutch counterpart. An important victory for him. And still a good crowd here at the English Institute of Sport into the evening. Day two of competition. And we'll be going right the way through to Saturday with Friday and Saturday the doubles competitions in this tournament, the first time we're seeing doubles at the European Paratable Tennis Championships. And finals of these various rounds will be held on Thursday. 
and we're ready to go. Service is with Earl Albert. And uh, first point to Matthews. Matthews into the net there, one, one apiece now. And this is the wheelchair class where you see a lot of the, the use of the lob, and there it is. And uh, It's almost like you knew it was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Just beginning to see it. I'm always amazed at how skillful that lob is and the spin that, that's on the ball and comes flying back. So Earl Alba makes an early start, 3-1, he leads. This time Earl Alba read the lob. He's made a good start, the Hungarian, Gavin. He's, uh, yeah, he's going he's gonna to need that. I think the first set's really important for him if he wants to, if he wants to have a chance against the higher-ranked opposition. He's got to put him on the back foot early. And, uh, might just take Tom a couple of points to find his range here. Olava misses the corner of the table, 4-3. Matthews closes the gap, 4-4. Four, four. And uh, these players using their other hand to balance the chair keep them as stable as possible 5-4 to the Hungarian now Five four to the Hungarian Catching up with me. Five apiece. Matthew still settling into this game, Gavin? Yeah, he's just taking his time here, get finding his range. You know, especially in class one where they play such high high risk lob balls and angles. Can take a little bit of time just to find that feeling and find that range on the table so I wouldn't be too worried about him just yet Matthews just couldn't quite find the range there so he's trailing by two I think the most important thing for him is you can see he's creating chances he made a good service there and a routine backhand error so once those balls start to go on he should have a little bit too much in the points. 8-5 to the Hungarian, so he's just beginning to creep ahead. Matthews with a good response there, 8-6. There's the lob. Good return, good. Oh, and Matthews missed that opportunity. Yeah, that's just uncharacteristic. Slightly high up for his backhand. Normally, that's one that Tom would put away quite simply, but just not, not quite there yet. Nine six, he trails. Oh, Tom missed that one. Looks a bit frustrated with himself there. And suddenly 10-6 to the Hungarian for the first set and takes it. Well, did that catch the edge of the table? Just to, just touch yeah. the edge, yeah. With the lob, Tom gets to within two, 10-8. Important moment for the Hungarian now. He needs to get this first set if he wants to have a chance. Into the net. 
A good recovery there from Matthews because the Hungarian returned well. 10-9. Matthews trails. Good from Tom, straight back to 10-10. A little bit surprised I didn't see a timeout at any stage there from the from the Hungarian coach. I think he would know how important this first set is for his player. Wow, and suddenly it's Matthews. Opens up that opportunity. And takes that first set. Yeah, slightly out of jail there, Tom Matthews, taking that set 12-10. Didn't really produce his best table tennis, but he got the job done, and that's all he's going to be worried about. Yeah, it wasn't, like you say, it wasn't convincing, and the uh, Hungarian had plenty to offer, but 12-10. Just wonder how disappointing that'll be for Urlaube. I think that's going to be a, a really difficult one to recover from for, for Urlaube. He had a huge lead there. Had Tom slightly worried on the ropes and just let him creep back in, so big shot to his confidence and a big boost for Tom. And of the Hungarian nation, as they do, they produce good table tennis players. As a yeah, the Hungarian nation is a, they would be renowned for producing a, a couple of Paralympic champions. So there are no strangers to uh, big performances at major championships. So the players returning to the table, they switch ends. Lots of strapping of bat to hand to make sure it's secure. And do the players actually set their wheelchairs and wheelchairs and lock them in, or do they like them to be moving? It really d varies it with depending on the player's ability. Um, for example, these players would probably not be on brakes, maybe on maybe on one side, just to provide some sort of stability. But given the fact that they have their left hand on the wheels, they want to be able to move and roll the wheels slightly in and slightly out where possible. Got you. And that's allowable within the rules. It's uh yeah, no restrictions around what movement they do as long as they don't move the table itself. Matthews opens up with a point. Is Erlaube up for the fight? We'll soon find out. Trails one set to love. His first two returns straight into the net. Difficult now. All momentum lies with Tom. And we're still yet to see his best table tennis, so the Hungarian's going to be hoped that, hope that he continues his as he did in the first. The lob comes uh, sweetly over the net, but takes a little touch of the, of the net to get there. 3-1 to Matthews. Matthews responds well, looking ominous for the Hungarian. Absolutely. Very self-conscious ball boy comes across the screen. <laughs> Good lob there from the Hungarian. Four-two. Service mistake direct there yep. from Erlauber. Just showing signs that he's not quite able to keep up with the level that he had in the first. 
on that occasion the net worked in the favour of Erlauber so 5-3 that one went long from Erlauber so 6-3 Thomas marching on nice finish there yeah, the lob ball there from earlier were just too long on the table for Tom, right within his reach. Just put it away safely. Trying to lob again, and it works again. 8-3 he leads. 9-3, great shot down the line, and it looks as if Earl Alba has really given up the ghost on this one. He's... bit erratic there from Tom but maybe just trying to give us a nice flashy backhand there to finish us out great shot from Earl Alba there maybe it's not all over 9-5 serve with the Hungarian long from Tom still no timeout. What do you think, coach? I don't think it's it. If he didn't call it in the last set, I don't think he's going to call it in this set. Let's put it that way. And that was a, a short serve that didn't work. So, set point. Oh, what a return. <laughs> Incredible. So, second set, 11-6 to... Thomas Matthews with a wonderful shot to end that one. So Matthews, two sets to love up. A mountain to climb for the Hungarian, and I think he looks and feels like he's got a mountain to climb. A pole position now really for Tom. All about game management now, just close it out, get home to the hotel and rest and get ready for tomorrow. Still, you've got to finish the job, haven't you? you just got to finish the job. Plenty of work to do, and that's what Neil Robinson now is coach, a fellow Welshman to be telling him. Not over just yet, still work to do, but let's get it done. So Matthews from Wales, I wonder which part, do you know? You Gaelic crew? I probably should know, but uh, I don't want to get it wrong, so I'm not <laughs> going to say it live on here. Matthews. Two sets to love up. Probably hasn't played consistently well but well enough would you say yeah getting the job done really here second set a lot better than the first but I suppose this is not the time of the tournament you want to be playing your best table tennis it's all about growing into the tournament and getting better and better as the matches and the rounds go on Tom is here for gold so he wants to produce his best when it when it matters most That's an interesting insight there. Just winning through the rounds is all that matters. Okay. Erlaba with the serve. Misses. Not having the look of the net at the moment the Hungarian is he um, great nice shot hand. wow unreturnable really straight down the line Earl Ober left it's difficult to manoeuvre that way isn't it once you've gone the other way for class one Just missed with the block there. Not a bad effort from Ulober. But Tom 
Just too strong on that occasion. And he takes an early lead, 3-0. Great. Having a little Ooh, bit of love. fun with this now, Tom Matthews starting to play a little bit more attacking table tennis and then finishing with the high ball. Well, what a super shot that was. Wonderful cross court. He's in flow now, Mr. Matthews. Six and oh. No timeout from the Hungarian. Again, no timeout, which is unusual, but maybe already slightly resigned to the inevitable. Perhaps he's got to get on the bus at uh, 8 o'clock, I think it is. <laughs> Food might be gone in the hotel. So a strong performance so far in this third set from Matthews. He's just improved as he's gone through. There's the lob. That didn't work. And 7-1 uh, to Matthews. And after the first game, you know, you, you saw Erlauber was almost taking a win, but didn't get over the line, and that's cost him dearly. And he's just good reached it there, but yeah. he's saying sorry, apologising. Hit the top of his racket rather than the actual rubber side of his racket, so a little bit of luck involved. No, I mean, it's, uh, there's just the one point so far for Earl Albers. Tom Matthews extends to nine. That goes long, 9-2. Is there a way back for the Hungarian? It just feels a bit forlorn. Oh, the lob works there. Matthews decided to leave it 9-3 yeah, just left it slightly late there to, to go for and there is just a wonderful one straight lob. back <laughs> great play from Matthews 10-3 match point can't finish it 10-4 again match point several of them and doesn't need it that's it Matthews comprehensive there Gavin yeah absolutely as we mentioned before probably not his best table and it's in the first two sets but job done third set produced a little bit more expansive and enjoyable to watch table tennis and moves, moves and books his place in the knockout rounds and keeps his mission for gold ongoing 12-10 11-6 11-4 for Matthews it got better as the game went on and two victories here on table one in the final two games of day two here at the European Para Table Tennis Championships. We're back tomorrow morning at 9.30 and we hope to see you then. Good night. <laughs>